Hey, Japan Brewers. Today is Kagan Day. Um, this is step one, um, purging out the star sand from the um, kegs. They've been soaking for two or three days. Um, I didn't realize this metal was not good for star sand, and it started corroding a little bit. Um, so, a reminder, soak it for just a short period of time, and then use the sanitizer pumping through the system to clean it out. Um, so, all I, all I do... Um, again, like I said, I like to have a CO2. This is already done already, a CO2 blanket at the bottom of it. So there's star sand, two liters, um, which you put it about here. Um, there's my tank. Um, all I do is just apply. This is the siphon that I'm gonna use. Um, so as I'm pumping through, I'm cleaning out the hoses, uh, sanitizing the hoses. Um, so I, I pop the gas on there, um, and then I just crank it up to, you know, just a few, just a little bit. There we go, that should do, that should do it right there. Um, lock it down. Gotta help to lock it down again. Um, and now the gas is pumping through. You can see the stars are slowly starting to move. So pump up the gas a little more. And you should start seeing. There you go. There's the star signs pumping out now. Pumping into the jar. And again, reuse it. Um, I've reused star signs up to like six months. Um, if you don't know, get some pH strips that go really low and you can test it as long as it's below two. Um, you're gonna be fine with your star sand on there. Um, this got milky because of that, uh, because of this. It's sort of reacting to it, but I guarantee that it's still functional, that that you know, star sand is still below, well below it. Um, so it's gonna pump out the ga uh, pump out the star sand, and it's also putting CO2 inside there. And right now, like Chewy said, it's, it is gonna mix, this, this will mix. Um, now this star sand's out, I just bump it down, and what that'll do is, it'll get the rest of the pressure coming out. So there we go. Because you don't want pressure on it when you put in the beer. So now it's done, it's stopped bubbling. Um, I can disconnect the gas again, and then pull this up, and then go on to the next one. Um, but what this is gonna do is, um, the CO2 right now is gonna be mixed up with the oxygen. It's gonna be mixed all inside there. But I'm not putting the beer in instantaneously. Um, keg sitting on there. Within a few minutes, it, the gases will settle out. Um, the CO2 will go to the bottom, and the oxygen will, will, will separate to the top. Um, and then you'll have that blanket sitting there. Um, so when you when you put in your beer, it's below the, the, the shaft. The shaft goes all the way down to the bottom. Um, it'll be sitting in a CO2 blanket. So as you're putting in the the beer, of course you're gonna have that shaft has some oxygen inside there. And that's just, you just can't really get away with that. Unless I've done one time, I've reversed these and I pumped the gas through the, the stem itself. So when you disconnect it, the, the gas is gonna stay in there. It's not gonna wanna push out because um, there's no there's a vacuum behind it so that's one way to, to stop it from from doing that but that's just a little bit of air um, not something to worry about um, but anyways this is gonna settle out the gas go here um, I got a few things to do before I, I this is so the next segment you're gonna see me racking is gonna be a time lag a difference between it right now I'm just prepping this up let the gas settle up um, the beer is sitting at my goal six six degrees six point five um, it, this morning when I got out, it was, it was like 5.3, so it's really cold, and I guarantee it's really clear. Um, so, but the plan of today is there's enough to fill two, but I'm filling three because I'm going to force carb it. And then once I force carb it to, the, to what I like, I'll be sampling a little bit of each to make sure it's, it's carbonated the way I like it. And then once that's done, then it's then I'm going to take the one, and I'm going to combine half and half to these. Um, I think full, I think these are 14.5 kilograms when they're full. Um, so what you do is use a scale and weigh them, and I'll show you that a little, a little bit later too. Other videos show it too. So anyway, so this is cake prep. Um, let's go on to the next video, um, racking up the beer. Okay, take care, guys. Okay, now we're on to racking. Um, I just started this up. Um, remember, these auto siphons they can suck oxygen in, so suck air in. So um, here's my spray bottle of Star Sand. I just fill the bottom of it up. I don't know if you can see. It. I want to pull it out here. Um, but I put, you can kind of see the foam down there. Um, I put, you know, good about this much of star sand that you just spray inside there. Um, every once in a while, I'll just give it a, a couple sprays um, inside there. Um, and that's going to stop oxygen from sucking in there. Um, it will suck it in there because it's, it's easier to pull air through that, that uh, little rubber grommet than it is to pull this heavy beer up and then pull it down inside the keg. Um, so, you know, that's how you get that, you can get some really bad oxygenation. Um, but I'm going to put one of these in here. This is almost seven liters. Um, that'll put it almost at 11 kilograms, 11.5 kilograms, um, per thing. That'll give us a good, uh, three liter head on this. 
Um, and these are pretty close to full, about the same. They're, they're pretty about the same level. So I'm gonna do three, and I got three of these to, to do. Um, it, it is clear, I don't know, you can't really, you can kind of see it, it's, it's just really chilled in there, so it's got some chill haze and stuff inside there. Um, but it'll settle out again inside here, and then we'll have uh, some good beer going inside there. So anyways, I tilt them, I lean them when I do this, when I start, um, because it's there's a lot of weight inside here, so as you lean it, it won't disturb the, the tube as much. Um, if you do it and you start siphoning, then you the, towards the end you want to get the re last rem remnants of out, um, and then you start leaning it. Um, well, kind of, it'll, it'll start, you know, because it's a lot lighter, it moves, the liquid will move faster. So what will end up happening is you'll end up sucking in um, or mixing up a lot of trube inside there. I'm just repositioning so it's down now at the very bottom. Um, and the one thing that I, used, that I forgot about once, um, I, that little stopper piece at the end, at the bottom, that's a very good piece to have on there because um, you can stick it right in the in the tube and it, it doesn't suck any of the tube inside. It just pulls the beer around it and stuff too, so that's really helpful. But when you first start siphoning, keep your siphon about halfway up um, so you just really suck it in. You're putting more of the pressure onto the clear beer area and you're sucking that in. As you get lower, then lower it down slowly and pull inside there um, and it'll, it'll lessen the amount of, of gunk that you've got inside there. So um, again, just to recap, Putting the adapter on here, um, you can buy these. These are hose connectors. Um, they fit right on there, so you don't have to worry about sticking a hole inside there. Um, and then leave the gas open, um, so that as the beer's filling up, it's pushing. Um, the first top is probably going to be air, um, but the second, the bottom half of it's probably CO2. Actually, I really said when I pumped out the in the in the previous part of it, I pumped out the the um, sanitizer with the CO2. Um, so now, as the, as it moves up, the CO2 head will be moving up too, and then it'll, it'll just become... If you put your finger over here, you can feel the, the air coming out. Um, if you really want to test how much CO2 is inside there, at this level or so, you can actually put your nose next to that valve, and when you start getting a tingling sensation like soda in your nose, then you know that that really is a lot of CO2. And when you play with it, you get the feel of how much you need to put inside there to get that head. I've done it a few times, and I don't need to do it today, but I've done it a few times to know when... Oh, there's quite a bit of CO2 coming out um, on there. So a little bit goes a long way with the CO2 um, head on side there. So there's that. Um, I'm going to move on to the next. I'm going to fill these up, and then we'll see, you'll see the next stage uh, gassing it. And I have a previous video as well, but I'm going to show you on this one as well. Um, get forced carbonation. Uh, forced carbonation. You can also, um, if you wanted to, you could also put um, conditioning. Well, see here. Let me, let me stop right there. You can see little air bubbles starting to come through. This means that it's already got the um, star sand out. So I'm going to pump some more star sand inside there. Now you can see it foamed up into the bottom here. That'll stop it from sucking in air. Um, so anyways, so um, you can condition these regular by just, you know, um, was it five? I used to use five grams per liter of sugar, um, warm water, mix it up. And then you could dump it inside the keg through like a funnel that's sanitized and then put it inside there and then condition them. Um, but that'll take another probably week to two weeks um, to natural carbonate them. And that's fine too. And it tastes really well. And with that, you don't, you won't need so much headroom. You could actually fill it up almost to the top because, and, and then that's better when you, when you, when you, for, when you, uh, keg condition or bottle condition them is not to have any head on there because it, the, the, it'll keep the, the carbonation inside the beer itself. Um, so that's one way to do it, but we're going to be drinking these beers in two days. Um, so therefore I'm going to force carb it and then I'm going to crash them again and try to get some of it to settle down a, a, a wee bit. Um, so I'm going to go on with these and then we'll show the force carbing. Okay, now we're on to force carbing. Um, set, make sure the ball valve is inside here so the beer doesn't spew it out. Gas is on, set it to 40. It's hissing a little bit, this, this bleeder valve is right at its verge. I'm going to do four minutes, and I'll start it here, and here we go. Um, I should take off your socks. And just, you know, keep shaking it. Um, four minutes might be a little a little much, um, but I don't know. Sometimes it bleeds out. Well, I used to do it uh, two minutes, check it, and then a minute, and it, sent, it always came out about three minutes, 30 seconds or so. Um, so I might stop this the last 30 seconds or so, because I get the video camera set up that was pumping in um, CO2 as we were going. Um, and just, you know, rock it back and forth um, on it. Um, and then you'll get the, that effect. And so I'm going to do this one. 
um, and then I got you know get the hose the hose prep ready with a little just a server thing, um, and I'll you know spray a little bit in the, in the glass, check its carbonation, um, see how how well I like it, and just keep doing that over and over again until I get what I like. Um, 40 psi, uh, make note of it, and then your next two kegs um, follow the, the exact same time and the pressure, and you'll get pretty close to the same thing. Well, one of these is going to be combined half and half into into here, so it's not such a big deal. Um, it'll it'll balance out itself um, if you overdo one of them or something. Um, so I'm going to keep doing this, and then I'll show you how to link them together um, and push the beer in because it's not the same as siphoning. You got to use pressure with the gas to push it through while this one is letting the pressure out to fulfill to fill up the head and stuff. Then pump a little more gas into it uh, to stabilize it. Okay, um, so let's get on with this and then I'll, uh, we'll see how it'll transfer over. Okay, uh, three and a half minutes or so, um, stopped it. It was probably definitely four minutes because, you know, setting it up. Um, I put a little bit of uh, petroleum, this is uh, food grade uh, lubricant um, on here just to keep the, the stuff going, the, the fasteners, you know, the seals from getting chewed up a lot. Um, when you find these couplers, they're really hard to find with a bleed valve inside of them. Um, my other ones don't have bleed valve. I found this one. It was a little more expensive with the bleed valve. Um, but I recommend getting them because you can bleed it off. When you go to pour yourself a pint to check the carbonation level, bleed it because you got a lot of pressure on, on top of this beer. Um, pressure trying to force into the, the liquids. Um, if you attach it, it's going to just go all crazy. Um, you want to get the serving pressure, uh, which would be like one bar, um, one little more than one, um, which is be about 10. 12 or so. I always just look at one. One bar is probably a good serving. Of course, depending on how long your, your tubes are, your serving tubes are. Um, there's a, there's some stuff on the internet to find out how to do it. It's also how high up, how ground level to the tap and how length of hose and stuff too. And there's a, there's a figuration configuration for that. Um, but bleed it off until no more gas goes. Um, and this, oh, I'll see the beer is forming up now. Because it's all getting agitated now, real, real fast. You do it, probably slower would have been better. Um, but some of the beers coming out. Yeah, that's probably close enough now. Um, so I just got my little party server thing here, and I always use my my glass. Where is my glass? Um, I I got this from Dwarfs. It's a it's very thin, uh, and it lets me see some stuff through it. Um, so I'm gonna go pour one. Um, Hopefully I can do it from here on it. It's gonna get all foamy because, you know, this is the first one I wanna dump out real fast because I wanna check it now that we got it in the hose. Um, I'm just being a klutz on here. So real fast over to the sink. Dump it out, we don't need it. Um, and then I'm gonna pour a tad bit inside here. Again, it's, it's clumsy because my hand is not on it. And I haven't added any gas on it. Um, I'm just using what's inside the beer, and, and again, this is going to be really hard to, 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 to weigh it in because, you know, this is, it's pulling some of the gas out, but you can get it pretty close to where you think um, you can, you know, you're going to like it. Um, so, there that is. Um, you know, it's got haze inside of it and stuff too, but anyways, that's how I test it, and I'll just drink it up. The head on it is due to the hose and the agitated beer inside there. You could let it sit for a bit if you want to and, and do the other ones a couple minutes um just be patient you won't get so much you know head getting pulled out of there but um anyways that's how you test it see how they like the carbonation etc i lost probably a little bit probably 20 percent, 15 20 percent in that so when you drink it you think you got to figure it's gonna be a little bit more carbonated than that than what you like what, what what you're tasting inside here because of the pressure that i lost out of there okay so um, if there's any more stuff, any questions you got, let me know. Um, but anyways, the next the next clip we'll go to is just transferring this one into both of them and filling this all the way up to where we want it. Okay, let's watch the next clip. Okay, now we're on to transferring over. I'll transfer this one into here. Um, I didn't need my scale for this one, so let me run over and get my scale um, because we don't want to overfill. This is four kilograms plus that top, so 4.5. This holds 10, so that's gonna be 14.5, and that'll be max. But you can tell when it starts coming, beer starts hissing out of here, and then that pretty much will indicate it. So I might just do that today um, and fill it up. Anyways, I purged these um, with all the gas out. Um, this one has no purge, so just I open the gas real slowly and let it all seep out, so there's no gas inside here. 
Now what we want to do is we want to equalize it. They are equalized now, so you could just do it that way. Um, I have a gas, I have a, a beer fitting on this side and a gas fitting on this side. Um, you can do both if you have two. I just ran out of quick, quick adapters. Um, so attach one, attach the other to here, and uh, we're just going to transfer it from here to there. Um, I purge my gas out, make sure the valve's off. Um, I hit it. There we go. And just that little bit in the hose just threw some over here. Make sure this is undone so the, the gas, the air and the gas can purge out as it's going on. And then I just start adding just a little bit of gas like you would do for serving. Um, somewhere near a bar or so. And once that's on a bar, you can start seeing now, now it goes clear and now it's pumping inside here. And you can hear the gas going out. Um, if you want to slow it down, you can turn the gas down a little bit, but the gas is pushing past these, these valves and stuff too. So there's a certain point where it won't come in, it won't kick in. If you want to slow it down, you can slow it down by just turn, turn, turning this knob a little bit and kind of restricting the gas flow out. Um, but you could take it all the way off if you wanted to. Um, it's not such a big deal, but the problem is if you do that, you can get a lot of beer spirting out of here um, when it starts getting really full. Um, this way, when you're hearing it, yeah, you can hear it pumping up and stuff. Um, there's gonna be a lot of foam in head anyway, so you might wanna get ready to get a towel like I have down here um, and let you know some of the foam you know, spurt out of there because you don't want that head on there. You wanna float up as much as possible. Um, so you can, now you can hear it gassing out here. You can hear it spurting out. And I'm gonna let that go. And the way, the way you, you, know, you can stop it is pull a valve, but you gotta be careful because there's no stopper inside here. So the beer will just start popping out here. So the best way to do it is to stop it from here, um, or just yank this 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 knob off right here. Uh, but this is just foam um, from the head of the beer getting agitated. Um, it's not such a big deal. Um, you can see the beer kind of slowly going through. It's getting you know a little bit of pressure on here. I can open that up a little more, speed up the beer a little more. Um, but right now that looks pretty good. I don't see any, any real liquids coming out. Just head. Um, that's kind of what I'm looking for. Um, we could weigh it right now. Um, I could stop this whole process. Just simply crimp this off and then slow everything down. Um, and then we could weigh it um, and see how much is inside there. But I think we're, we're close. But I think we can just still pump in a little bit more um, beer inside here. So, so this is just head coming out. Yeah, I think we're still good. Um, getting close though. Yeah, that's right at the end there. Yeah, it's getting full. I'm gonna crimp it off now. Take off the gas. I wanna keep pumping it in here. Um, then pulling this one off first um, to stop this, because this has no no valve inside here. Remember the little BB, there's a little BB valve inside there. Because um, if you if you pull that off it's just gonna come gushing out everywhere. Um, so yank these two off. Now we're ready to now we're ready to go. Put these away. Um, put them on a dish so I don't touch anything with it. Um, unlock these just to be safe. Um, and then I'm just gonna go weigh it real fast. Um, so you know we got a lot of head beer cleaning up a little bit. My wife doesn't get mad. Um, clean up here. So let me go grab the scale. I know you guys don't want to sit and watch me carry a scale around, um, but it's it's pretty close. Um, Reset, let's pull it up here, right down here, and our goal is 14.5, and we're at 14, so we could do a little bit more beer, but uh, it feels pretty full. I'm going to probably just go with that. Um, you could probably get another 500 liters inside, milliliters inside there, which makes it pretty close to the top. So I'm just go ahead now, and this is halfway full now. Um, sometimes you can see the con condensation inside here, but you could pick up, you could actually weigh this one here, and four for the... So if we're halfway there, um, this was doing at 11 minus the four, which is seven. So this should be around the seven part. Um, and we're at eight, so we're really close to half and half on this one. So I'm gonna continue this up and then we're good to go. Any questions you got, thanks for hanging out. Any questions you got, message me. Um, but this is, a, this is a fast way to do it. I really wanna have a, a larger bright tank, like a 50 uh, liter bright tank. And I think I found a company that does gas, um, gas tanks. Uh, liquid petroleum and petroleum gas tanks are stainless steel 
and I think I might be able to have him convert one um, of those large size, and that'd be really great. Could pump in a, a you know hundred liter you know more, let it sit, let it settle, um, carbonate it up and right in the bright tank, and then put them into the kegs right from there. So that's kind of the goal eventually, is to get you know massive bright tank set up so I can just put in lots of beer, um, three big batches at one time, fill it all the way up and let it settle out and then carbonate right from there with the tank next to it and then just keg it right off the top. Stay cool guys, any questions, give me a, uh, give me a buzz, okay? Take care guys.